Dirty Hands Means Clean Theology. Can you dig it? This is Timothy Albrino. Hey, this is Trey Smith. My name is Elliot Marzulli. This is Dr. Judd Burke. This is Ryan Peterson. If you want to know your Bible, you have to dig, and you're in the right place. This is the Dig Bible Podcast. Well, hey, everybody, this is Micah Turnbell, and you are watching the Dig Bible Podcast. What is going on, all my local guys and gals? And we can't forget about those long-distance pals. We're back. <laughs> we are back. Yes, we are. I'll never get used to that. I'm sorry. It just it kills me every time. Hey, man, it sticks. The yeah. people love it. And they, they haven't told us if they don't love it, so... You know. That's true. They might just fast true. forward past the intro. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, man, uh, let's just dive right in. Uh, we got a really good episode, Steve. Uh, normally, it's uh, me doing all the boring emails and stuff, but Steve uh, got us a really great guest this week. Steve, go ahead and introduce our guest and set us up, man. Well, today we have with us a, a seer prophet, the founder of uh, Behold Wonder and the pastor of Prophetic Ministry at the Vineyard Northwest Church in Cincinnati, Ohio, Micah Turnbow. I'm glad to be here. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I, I'm stoked. I really am. Um, Behold, I, I wanted to kind of go on this for a second. You're the, like I said, the founder of Behold Wonder, which I think mm -hmm. is such a cool name mm -hmm. when we kind of delve into more about your past, your history, and, and, yeah. and what you do now. I think that's a very fitting title. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I just, I loved, I was reading through um, kind of the description mm. and I love what it says. Behold, wonder's goal is to see friends of God encounter him in a real way mm -hmm. so that his display of glory and power is recognized all across the earth. That's right. That's I right. mean, that's our calling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's I mean, right. It's actually everybody's. <laughs> yes, <know>? that's it. <laughs> everybody's. Mm -hmm. So we love it, but it's, it's just awesome to have you and, mm -hmm. um, just really happy you're here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I am excited to be here. <laughs> well, I guess kicking off a little bit, Mike, I, you know, not everybody knows maybe, and I would say most people in our space do, mm -hmm. but not everybody would know when we say a seer prophet, mm -hmm. what that really means. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you go into that a little bit? And when you realize that you had that spiritual gift. Oh my goodness. Well, okay. So just, a, what a seer prophet is simply, and there's there's many variations of it, but simply put, is someone who sees into the spiritual world and they talk about it. Okay, they just see the spiritual realm, angels, demons, other spiritual beings, um, and they talk about it. They tell you what's there. But well, the difference between a seer who serves the Lord and a seer who serves the world is the seer who serves the Lord is there about. Um, releasing the kingdom of god it's about the gospel the message of jesus christ that's that's every um desire of a true seer who loves jesus who loves the bible so that would be what i am i am a seer who wants to release the kingdom of god who wants to bring people into freedom hope you know um release the justice of god the mercy of god that's what i do but I actually didn't really know that that's what a seer was or what even a seer, that, that a seer existed. Oh my gosh, until maybe I was like 17, 16 or 17, because to me, growing up, I thought everybody could see into the spiritual world. And so when I was a kid, when I was little, I would, I would uh, see into the spirit world, but I thought it was a normal occurrence. I thought everybody could see it. I thought it was normal for everyone. So um, when, I, when I was little, I would just see like uh, when my sisters, when they would praise dance at our church, I would see uh, lights, like ribbon lights of different colors, vibrant colors. The colors in the spiritual realm are so much more vibrant. Um, and even colors that you don't even recognize. There's, and I don't even know how to explain that. There's, there's millions of different shades of red, but there are other colors that I don't even have names for. But um, they, I would see these colors move around my sisters as they would worship the Lord in church because they were in the praise dance. And I would just watch it and I thought it was part of the, the deal, you know. And I realized that uh, 
no one was seeing those things because I would talk to my parents about it and they would say, oh, we didn't see any red lights or we didn't see any um, ribbons, colored ribbons. And then I would say, oh, the men in the back of the building in the white suits, because that's the only way I could dis explain <laughs> you know, what angels were. I, they would always go and stand in the back, you know, and they would talk to each other. And when I was little and I would see them talk to each other, I couldn't um, hear their voices yet, but I could see their mouths were moving. And uh, they looked so nice, but so friendly, but uh, you wouldn't want to, you know, mess with them. You know, they looked like they would <laughs> beat you to a pulp if you got one. You know, like they were strong, but they looked so nice and kind. And um, I remember seeing one that he would always kneel down in the back of the sanctuary. I remember seeing one, he would always kneel down and because he was so big that his body would go outside of the building. So he would always kneel down and look inside and he would just talk to people and <laughs> talk to the his other fellow angels and um but yeah i didn't realize oh that i'm a seer you know i thought this is normal life you know there are other people in other dimensions i didn't you know honestly i didn't even really think about dimensions when i was little either i just thought they were just other people you know in the in the room it, so i thought it, they were weird when they couldn't see it <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like, it makes me think like, you know, you got your imaginary friend mm -hmm. and you're telling your parents and they're like, oh, well, is Johnny coming? <laughs> you know, they just play along or like, right. okay, right. you know, okay. And, yep. and so you're like, well, you know, you don't see, you know, yeah, I could, yeah. Yeah, they're here. I mean, we would do a New Year's service and I was little and I was probably like four, four years old. And I remember this. We would uh, do New Year's service and um, because we were in the Pentecostal church, so we thought that Jesus was going to come back at the end of every year, you know. Um, but they, they, we would do a service, and we had this throne um, on the stage, and they had these blue sparkles on the ground and, and, and these beautiful drapes of blue and, and just sapphire and everything. It was gorgeous. And I would always see someone sitting in that seat all the time. And I knew it was Jesus, and he would just sit there, and he would watch the performance and everything. And I, no one could see him. And I thought, you know, why can't anyone see him? Oh, he's part of the show. I literally thought Jesus was part of the show, you know. He came every New Year's to watch the show, you know. So when I got older, um, I started to realize this is different, you know. Um, I'm 11 years old, 10 or 11 years old, and I'm saying... And I'm realizing, okay, this is this is a little different. No one is talking about it. Because the older I got, the more I started to understand, I could start to hear the spiritual beings talking to talking, you know, and they would tell me little things. Not full conversation with me, but they would say, Hi, hello, or, you know, you love God, you know, and I would say, I love him too. They weren't really giving me messages yet. But I started to started to hear them and um see their activity more detailed and um, no one could see him yet. So I realized I'm, I must be a little different, <laughs> you know, than everybody else right now. So I think well, that's you, so cool. Well, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I just want to ask, uh, you know, you said you remember seeing him sitting on the throne during church mm -hmm. service. Uh, could you describe, you know, Jesus in, in your vision? Oh, Jesus is, Jesus is so powerful. I mean, he is, he is a very much down to earth kind of guy. I mean, seriously, he 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 loves he loves life. He loves to joke. He loves to kid. He's 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 so fun. But when I saw him um, on that throne, he had his hair because not all the time is Jesus' hair always going to be you know shoulder length hair. You know, like he sometimes he has different. He puts it in a different position. So in this case, he just had it in a low uh, ponytail. And he was sitting on on that throne, and he was in brown, so, uh, in, like a like a, a rich brown, and it and it was long sleeve, and it came around his uh, middle finger here, and these different fabrics of brown. It was beautiful, and um, on both long sleeves, and then he, a long robe, and he, on the side, on the side of his. On his right side, there was this scepter. But guys, I tell you what, it was powerful. And it it was so powerful that 
around the tip end of it, which was like this jewel, around the tip of it, it would crack the realm around it. It looked like it was shifting, causing the fabric of reality to shift. It was so cool and so mm. powerful. And it was just on his side. He never used it or anything, you know. Um, but he just looked so pleasant watching the show. And he would sing the songs. And when my sisters would dance, he would clap his hands. And there were times he would stand up and he would clap his hands. And, and he just looked so involved. And, you know, um, with what was going on, he's such a friendly king. <laughs> Jesus is so friendly. That's awesome. That's such a cool thing. You know, we all have our, our ideas based off scripture, based off yeah. everything we've been taught. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and Jesus truly is, you know, uh, he's a God of love. Yes. And that's something that we've been taught, you know, um, mm -hmm. It wasn't always taught that way in the church, but we, you know, after the Reformation and things like that happened and we started seeing when the Bible started being translated and people actually got the chance to listen yeah. and, and read it for themselves, they understood. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I guess one thing I want to say before we get too far is because some people will listen and I guarantee you probably come in adversity with this kind of stuff at times. And one thing I think that's really important is that people probably look at you and say, well, that's not real. People can't be prophetic. That's not something that happens. Right. And I, I think it's funny that they can read the Bible, listen to all those things, understand prophecy is there. It's right in front of you. It, they talk about it all the time. Yeah. But then, you know, I believe that, but no, it can't happen now. Right. I think mm -hmm. we have to understand that God still works. God still does these amazing things. Yeah. We still have the Holy Spirit inside. We have the Holy Spirit inside us. You know, if we yeah. go to the Old Testament, they didn't. Yeah. I think it's really important that people understand that this is it. The spiritual realm is very real. Yeah. It's it all is. around us. It is so real. And, you know, let's just be honest. Most of the times we say God can't do something. It's just because it's never happened to us and we just don't want it to happen anymore. Like we... One thing that I've learned is that we keep telling God how he should act. We keep telling God how he should be around us. No, God, you don't do that anymore. No, God, you don't speak that way anymore. We tell him. When he created love, communication, experience, and encounter, he gets to decide how he wants to interact. You know, and this is how God wants to interact. He, his arms and his heart is wide open. But we look at him and we say, no, it's the same thing with the Israel, the people of Israel. When God descended on Mount Sinai, his intention was that they would come up the mountain to meet with him. But what did they say? No, Moses, he will kill us. You go. And so God said, okay, come on up here, Moses. But what would have been like if the people of Israel would have went up to that mountain and encountered Yahweh? They cheated themselves out of an encounter. And that's how we, uh, that's, that's what's happening today. It's like we keep cheating ourselves out of encounters because we made the, we get, we decided that God doesn't want to do that anymore. We decided that it's just not okay. And yet we sit here and we make Lucifer, Satan, so much bigger. <laughs> we make Satan's just it's a copycat. Scary. Yeah, <laughs> we sit here. And we 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 we're quick to believe the devil. We're quick <laughs> to believe false prophecy. We're quick to believe false encounters and witchcraft and Ouija boards and all that stuff. But you say someone has a picture in their head. Oh, you're crazy. You know, <laughs> when no, God right. created, yeah, when God created the supernatural, it belonged to Him. The spirit world. It says in Colossians that all things were made for Him and by Him. Satan just took it and copied it. Because he I just hate the to... cognitive dissonance, like you know, like Stephen, mm -hmm. you know, kind of touched on there. It's like mm -hmm. when you hear about supernatural things in yeah. the world, people, you know, yeah. are quick to say, "Oh, they're liars. They're they're attention mm -hmm. seekers. They they're mm -hmm. trying to sell books." And it's mm -hmm. like if they would stop and just think for a minute, and if they're professing yeah. Christians, it's like mm -hmm. you profess to believe that God came down in the flesh, died. <laughs> resurrected on the you know and then went down into hell took the keys right. of death and and right. resurrected and you mm -hmm. believe that a a, a donkey w was mm -hmm. talking to prophets and just all these miraculous and supernatural things right. the parting of the red sea the pillar of fire yeah. and it's yeah. like why why don't you 
believe something as small as is God speaking to someone, which is mm -hmm. in numerous accounts in your Bible. Right. Absolutely. I think it's they're scared. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, it's it's uh, I can't remember. It was I can't remember if it was Doug or Preacher talking or if it was uh, Mark Driscoll. I, I think Stephen likes him, too. I like listening to him a lot. He's out mm -hmm. in Arizona. But uh, it's it's he was saying like pe people don't want to hear it mm -hmm. because then the Holy Spirit you know is telling them they're doing wrong. It's convicting. They don't, they, yeah, yeah, it's convicting yeah. them, and they don't want to. They don't want to hear yeah. it. Yeah, and it's I mean you see it all the time. Yeah, you know you, you just walk by and say you know have a good day Jesus loves you, mm -hmm. and you'll see someone just throw a fit. <laughs> right. And and what it is, they don't want to hear it because they know everybody knows deep down, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just they don't want to hear it because they don't want to feel that conviction. Because mm -hmm. you know, obviously, that don't feel good. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't but, feel good. You know, right, right. Yeah, you know, we battle so, not against flesh and blood. You know, principalities, powers, demons, rules of the air. You know, they're influencing hearts as well. You know, they don't want people to encounter God. That's what it comes down to. Is that Satan doesn't want us to have encounters with God. He does not want us to hear God's voice. The, the simplicity of knowing the voice of God. Man, if that that is gold right there. When people realize that God speaks to you and he loves to speak to you, it changes so many things. Yeah. Now, do you believe that, that uh, like people are born with, you know, like yourself with, with spiritual sensitivity and like you know, yeah. certain gifts that only certain people get. And if you do, is it like a muscle that you can actually train and strengthen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. The, um, yeah. You know, some people are called to be prophets. Some are called to be evangelists. You know, um, I do believe we all can hear God's voice and see into the spiritual realm to a certain extent, to a certain level. But uh, not everyone is a seer, you know. I am not a doctor, but I can study the human body. But you won't find me in a hospital. <laughs> you know, I didn't go through the teaching and the trainings for that, you know. And I'm okay with that. Some people are arm, some people are a leg. Um, and so I have this, uh, this gift. This, uh, I am hypersensitive to it. And so what I do is I like to train others to exercise um, their ability to see in the uh, at, at certain degrees in the spiritual world visions and dreams you know that's that's for everybody you know um i've known people who've never seen an angel before in their life and they've taken a class for me and they saw an angel and you know and it was awesome but that's why i like to to bring a difference between seeing in the spirit and what a seer actually is the seer equips people to see you know and they have um you know, various degrees of levels of seeing so they can equip others, you know, to see. So anyone can see in the spirit, but not everybody is a seer. And I've had to, I've had to work at um, the muscle because it is like a muscle. I could turn it on, turn it off. Um, and I've had to practice, you know, uh, one of the ways I practice constantly is, is writing things down, journaling things down. One another thing I did was uh, I liked art, so I would uh, draw or sketch out the angels I would see, and that was really fun to do. And I got some minor art lessons from a friend of mine um, on how to do wings and just body structures and things just to kind of get me going. And that was fun. That was a fun process to uh, strengthen my gift to notice detail because I'm taking in so much, so much uh, sensory things at the moment that I can sometimes miss detail, you know, and so drawing things out and writing it down and slowing down, say, okay, you know, what did I see here, you know, helps me to strengthen it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, physical exercise is, is also a thing, you know, um, some people don't think about this, but for Sears, it's like, you know, exercise, getting good sleep, that also helps. Um, at the various degrees of the encounter, how strong the encounter is, will affect my body physically. So if I am moving in the spiritual realm, if the Lord, you know, because this happened to John, where God 
moved, put him in the spirit, you know, um, moved him from his body and put him in the spirit. If I'm in the spiritual realm for a long time, especially before the throne of God, there's power on my spirit body. So when I enter back into my physical body, it, it can uh, make my physical body very sore. And uh, I have to eat. I have to um, rest my physical body. And you see biblical examples of that where um, some of the prophets would fall down as if they were dead and they would say strength and they would stand back up, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. it just takes a toll on your body. So, um, yeah, there's various things I do to stay strong and keep practicing and keep studying. Now, is there anything like you do as far as, uh, I know you mentioned, you know, the, the how it drains you physically, like, mm -hmm. Is there any kind of like preparatory work like, you know, you do to to try to mm. uh, get a message mm -hmm. from from, the, you know, these angels and stuff? Or is mm -hmm. it just just total random? Is it they just approach you whenever they want to? Mm -hmm. It is both, actually. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, sometimes angels come and I feel like I'm so unspiritual. I'm doing unspiritual things like I'm watching Netflix or. Oh, you're human, you know, brother. We're all human. Yeah, I'm doing just whatever I'm doing, and they show up. Sometimes I'm in my car eating, you know, on my lunch break, eating Panera or whatever, and they'll just approach my car and want to talk, you know, and they'll sit in my passenger seat or they'll lean against the hood of my car and look at me and talk, <laughs> you know. So I I do things to um, also prepare. Um, I One of the things I I really recommend is – Meditating on scripture is so important. Meditating on the Bible is key to um, really, because angels, when they talk to you, or any, like any spiritual being that the Lord sends, when they talk to you, um, they will be saying verses to you in like a conversation setting. They don't always say, oh, Acts 2.13 says, they're just talking in a conversation. So meditating on the scripture helps you to pin out, pinpoint scriptures and verses that they're saying naturally. And so when angels talking to me, I'll say, oh, that's Colossians 3, 6 that he just said. Oh, that's Revelation 4, 1. And we're just having a conversation. So meditating on scripture is so important when interacting with spiritual beings. Um, so you can follow along with them. You can continue the conversation. It's a smooth process. So that's one of the things that I do to prep. But guys, honestly, I'll, if you read a lot of my stuff with angels, it's just I am doing whatever. I've had it where I'm brushing my teeth and one walks into the bathroom. <laughs> just I'm brushing my teeth and walks by. I threw my toothbrush at the at the mirror because it startled me. <laughs> you know, I was like, ah, and we just talk. You know, I've, I've had them um, at a park or in a movie theater. Come sit next to me in a movie theater, you know, all kinds of ways. They just show up, you know, because they want to have a conversation and I can see them and they know that they can talk with me. My question is, are you sitting there and they always, do they come up and be like, what are you doing? You know you ain't supposed to be doing this. <laughs> yes, yes. That's always the fun part is when you get called out. Yes. Um, my, the, the, the guardian angel who's with me, his name is Eden and Eden is enormous, at least like 13 feet tall. He's enormous and his wings are, are, um, he can make them appear or disappear, but his wings are so big that they kind of like drag the floor. They're, they're just large. But when he's angry, when like, if there's a demonic attack coming, he turns into a bear, a big bear and is just insanely powerful just as and he's just destroying and ripping apart you know the demonic and and i've seen him do that and you know there were areas of my life where i dealt with sexual sin a lot and being a seer you know you could see what's going on you could see what's going on in the spiritual realm including in things that you were watching and uh eden would stand in front of me would stand in front of me and his wings would extend the room. <clears throat> they would extend out the room and the, I would see these demons that were trying to claw. They were trying to claw in and touch me and his wings were out open like that and they couldn't get through. 
you know, and uh, yeah, when you can see in the spiritual realm, it's yeah, they uh, things are different. The worldview is is very different. But yeah, they would discipline me. They would say you shouldn't do that. Why'd you say that? Why are you thinking that? And I would have to say, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> you know, sorry, Lord. <laughs> so, yeah. So do, they, do they glow or anything like that? Because I know a lot of people talk about like they have like an aura about them, you know. Oh, yeah. Some of them glow. Some of them are like fire. My favorite ones are the ones that are like the elements. There's one angel I saw one time where the half, half part of his body was fire and the lower half was water. And he would he would mix them together. He would take his hands and he would swirl them and he would mix them together. And he would create these images when he would talk. He never really spoke with his mouth, but he would create these pictures with these elements. And I would look at the pictures and I would read the pictures. There's all kinds of different angels full of light, full of fire, full of some of made out of water. I've seen one angel that was complete feathers, just feathers. And you could see these eyes in the feathers. And he would, um, he, the feathers would kind of like how your hands go like this. That's the, it was like, that's how the feathers would move. They would go like that. And you could see these different eyes in them of different colors. It was amazing. All kinds of different angels. To see that would be unbelievable. That would just blow. I, yeah. I, I mean, I guess jealousy is a sin, but I'm, I'm mildly jealous. Oh, well. Maybe more than mildly <laughs> well, jealous. I'll pray right that now. y'all can have encounters with them. We'll pray together. Yes, because the Lord is giving out encounters. He's giving out angelic encounters through visions and dreams. And but one thing about angels, guys, is that they all don't look like us all the time. And they, like I said, Eden turns into a big bear when he's, when literally when he's in fight mode. Um, they are they are all different, you know. Um, some of them are as big as buildings. I saw one time I saw an angel that filled the hemisphere, like the entire hemisphere. I was driving on the highway and the sky cracked open and this angel whoa, just comes in and he stands and he's filling the entire hemisphere. And he points his finger at me and he says, you, the Lord has a message for you, go home. <laughs> That's what he had to tell me. And I pulled over real quick. And I just screamed because I was so like, ah, but of course I went home. But, you know, I had to, I had to scream for a moment, you know, because that was so intense. He filled the entire hemisphere, you know. That's why I love the verse that says that when Jesus, um, when Jesus comes back to sin with all of his angels. Y'all, do you understand all of them? There are angels bigger than this planet. The, all of the angels are going to appear. Can you just picture that? No wonder the earth is going to need to shift. Because how are we going to fit those beings in here? You know, how, know. how is that even going to work? Can you imagine? It's not going to be like this, poof, there's Jesus. I'm talking about ripping of the natural world and lightning and fire. And all these beings coming in and Jesus is here. Because he's going to come here and live. <laughs> and I've seen Jesus in glorious states. I've seen Jesus so full of glory that I felt like I was going to die one time. It was so much. See, Jesus decides to, the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they, they, um, they subside their glory so they can have conversations with you, you know, and talk because they want to talk to you. They want to be with you. They're not going to explode you, you know. But I've had Jesus. I was in my dorm room at college, and I was just taking a nice nap because, um, you know, sleeping in between classes. And uh, the door swings open and Jesus steps in and guys, the light and the colors come, the, who come out, it just, his hair was on fire. Everything, his eyes were on fire. He was so full of intense brightness and light. And he just was standing in the doorway and he was looking at me and I had my pillow and I, and I don't know how to explain this, but I had my pillow and I would turn, I turned away from him because of intensity. But when I turned away to the wall, there he was. I couldn't hide from him. He was right there. Then I would turn to the other wall and he was right there. I don't know how to explain that, but it, it's like you couldn't hide from him. He was everywhere. And I just, and I remember saying, I'm trying to get these words out of my face. I'm covering my face. I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus. I'm saying, Jesus, wait, wait, hold on. And then he just puts his hand, he walks up to me, puts his hand on the top of my head, and this peace just came all over me. 
all over my body. And then he sped, he said, what can I do for you? And I just was like, what are you, what? What do you mean what can you do? The king of the universe wants to serve me right now? Whoa, you know, and I just laid there on my bed in his presence. I didn't, of course, didn't tell him anything. I was just so overwhelmed with this peace. And, and that's when I realized that Jesus, the Father, Holy Spirit, they want to be in relationship with us so much that they even will tone down their glory so they can be with us. Because their glory and their power is just unlimited. Just unlimited. And people say, don't, you, you know, don't worship an angel, Micah. I'm like, when you see the king of glory, <laughs> it says in his word, who is like you among the heavenly beings? In the council of the beings. In Proverbs, it says, who is like you among the heavenly beings? If you see Jesus and even the most glorious of angels, you'll be like, whoa, Jesus is outstanding. No one can compare to him. <laughs> you know, he's amazing. Jesus is amazing. <laughs> Well, have you had That's any wild. encounters with uh, other biblical characters? You know, like uh, like Michael, for instance, because you know mm-hmm. even his Michael. name in Hebrew means you know uh, who is who is like Yahweh. Yes, yes, I've had encounters with Michael. I have had encounters with uh, Gabriel. Now, Michael and Gabriel, their personalities are different. Michael talks less. Um, he's very kind. Very, the, all angels are super kind, you know. But they, um, the warriors. Let's just say the warriors talk a little bit less because they they want to destroy something. They want to break something. A little less they're, talk, they're, a lot more action, huh? Yeah, they were like, let's let me, you know, <laughs> let me. I saw one time an angel that was full of knives. One time, his he, everything was sharp, and he was protecting children. He was looking after children. And Michael had sent him to this to that location in my city to literally watch over the children at a local park. And I go over to this angel. I slide over to the angel, trying not to be, you know, weird or anything. But, you know, I slide over to the angel. And the angel's standing there. And he's got all these sharp, like everything was made out of these metal blades and knives. And his wings opened up. And you could see him, just blades and knives. And I said, what are you doing here? He said, Michael has sent me here to watch the children. And I said, oh, wow. And he said, you could see the demon count on the floor. And so I, I didn't realize this, but I looked on the ground and there were these guts on the ground from demons that he had destroyed that tried to get near him. This angel just, and I said, I said, I said how, do you, how do you handle this? How do you, how do you deal with you know, fighting these demons? And so he said, stand back. And so I stood back and I'm having a real conversation in real time, you know? And he opens his wings and then they go, Whoom, like, like knives. Whoom. And he just cuts them, anything that gets near him to pieces. And he's and he and that's his job is to watch the children. But Michael assigned him to that spot to that spot to watch kids. Angels are fascinating. But Michael is is big. He has a stash that says his name on it. Um, sometimes he'll carry two swords of lightning on his on his right and his left. Bronze wings, bronze color wings with fire. Um, hair black. He's got black hair. And he looks like a wrestler, you know, kind of stands like that, looks like a wrestler. When I first saw him, he just he was just big and he was just looking at me, you know. Like a bouncer. <laughs> dude. Dude. Is he is he Hulk oh. Hogan or is he Macho Man Randy yeah. Savage? Uh, I mean, like you like he reminded me of what those wrestlers you see on those those shows, you know, just big and just you know, and he was just standing there. I mean, I remember like his muscles and biceps were just huge and he was just standing there. He looked really upset. <laughs> you know, he just looked really upset when I first saw him. And my thing is with angels, this is just a fun thing I do, but my thing with angels, if I see an angel, I like to go and poke him, you know, just to break the ice. The knife angel, I couldn't poke because he had, he was sharp. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, yeah, I couldn't poke him. So when I went up to him, I was like, Only I once. Poke. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Only yeah. once. I have three fingers now, you know? <laughs> With but Eden, you'd be literally poking the bear. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Yep. Right. And um, Michael, is he's awesome, and he's powerful, and he loves kids. That's why children tend to see Michael the angel, because Michael will appear to children. He loves children. Um, even though he looks like he doesn't, he absolutely loves children. And he loves he, – he, he, he's so passionate about um, – us loving Jesus and staying focused on our on our purpose and our task. Where Gabriel is just Gabriel is very uh, royal looking. 
blue. He's, they call him in heaven, they call him the blue silver star. Because if he stands in the skies in heaven, he looks like a blue star with silver uh, uh, auras coming around him. And um, blue eyes, just beautiful. Um, and his wings will be silver. At times you could see sapphire gems inside each of the feathers. Um, but Gabriel's easier to talk to because he, he's a messenger. So he's easier to talk to. And, um, and, uh, but they make, see, one thing about angels is that they have relationship. What I mean by that is that they're, they're not robots. They know each other. They live life with each other. And um, when I sat in a room one time with Gabriel and Michael and uh, they started to kind of banter, not banter, or get on each other playfully, you know. And uh, Gabriel would say, you know, Michael always looks ser serious. Michael looks so serious, but you put a child in his arm and he melts. Put a child in his arm and he melts, you know. And um, Michael's less talking. Gabriel is all chat, chat. It's just really interesting. Angels are fantastic. <laughs> they are living, I, breathing beings. <laughs> on, that, on that same note, and you've talked about it with Eden, you said your guardian angel, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do we all have a guardian angel, every one of us? Yes, you do. You do. So, yes, everyone has one. And so when Father... Uh, when father knits you in your mother's womb, the first person that you talk to is him. Father tells you everything. He tells you everything you're going to do before you come to the earth. And um, so once he, he sends you to, uh, to the earth, into your mother's womb, because man and woman uh, make the soul in the, in the body, um, he looks throughout all the angels, and then he says, you know, you go. He selects them. Because he doesn't just want to pick some random angel. He picks one that will best fit you, best fit your growth. And you grow with the angel as you're here. So this is why it's so neat when you go home to be with the Lord forever, um, that your garden angel goes with you and you guys have the most cool conversation um, because he was with you through every experience of your life, every experience, good, bad, and ugly. They were there. Mine's going to slap me around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what and you guys will have a great time laughing about it because his perspective you'll get to hear He'll, you know things that you thought you know oh, i didn't do well here the angel will be like you did amazing did you not know what happened you know uh it's they're they're going to really tell us some really cool stories so yeah garden everyone has one Everyone has a guardian angel, but it's not just some random angel that's around you. This angel was handpicked by God himself to be with you and to experience life with you. That's a very comforting thought, you know what I yeah. mean? When all the things that we go through, and it kind of leads me into my next question. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I talked about it a little bit with you, I think, before we even started, the, the, yeah. the spiritual warfare landscape, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You just talked about the angel with the children, you know, with the knives all over and, yeah. and he, that, you know, these, he's taking these demons out, protecting these children. Yeah. Are we like, what is it? What does it look like on a daily basis? Do, are we always under attack? Does it come sporadically? Is there times when we're just more oppressed? Like, mm. how does it, at least in your perspective, in your experience, how does that, yeah. how does that spiritual warfare look? Yeah. Um, we are, we yeah, so the way it spiritual warfare works is, you know, I tell people, you know, demons really don't like you at all. But there are far less demons than there are angels. Yippee! Okay? Far, far less than, than there are angels. Um, not all the time, not all the time is there a demon around you that the angel is going to protect you from. That does happen. You know, that's especially guard angels. They're the first line of defense, usually when it comes to you personally. If they need backup, they'll ask for backup. Literally, they'll ask for a backup. Other angels will come in to assist. Um, but their main purpose when dealing with spiritual warfare is to remind you of your identity because there's so much authority in you. Um, angels will do what they can to move things away. Like I, there's a time when I was going through a lot of anxiety attacks and there were extra angels to help me go through that. They reminded me of Marines, just pillars of fire. They were insane. They had long spears and everything. It was awesome. But their goal of that was to teach me to walk in authority. You know, teach me to walk in authority 
that my voice carries weight and presence of the kingdom of God. When I speak a thing, when I speak into that demonic activity or that demonic atmosphere, things have to change. And so angels are so, um, when it comes to spiritual warfare, they really want you to press into being who you are, who you truly are in the kingdom of God. But um, um, they also minister healing as well. You know, when we go through uh, warfare and our hearts are hurting, um, your, your guardian angel will be there to minister to you. They're like the friend, the comforting friend that sit next to you, you know, to put their arm around you, you know, and to strengthen you, you know, to continue to press in. But yeah, spiritual warfare can be just as, just as exciting as armies everywhere to just as simple as, hey, get up, you can do this, you know, speak to that thing, tell it to go away. You know, it's berries. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It is cool. Yeah, yeah. And see, I think the spiritual warfare side too is we uh, we tend to fantasize and over exaggerate things sometimes. And yeah. yes, things are spectacular at times, but I think mm -hmm. you know, just my opinion. But most of the time, it's kind of like the screw tape letters. Mm -hmm. it's, it's small little attacks, you know, little temptations thrown your yeah. way. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, I always envisioned yeah. it as it was uh, like a like a test, like testing ground, mm -hmm. temptations for you and, and your spiritual growth. And if and when the time comes that you are just overwhelmed with demonic forces and things like that, then, you know, your yeah. your angels or, or God will, will, will step in with the, with the assist. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it always comes against your mind. Your mind is 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 so powerful. That's why Satan always attacks you. If he can get you to think that way, you'll speak it. And then that's where he got to because he knows there's power in your tongue. He knows there's power in your voice. So if he gets your mind to think in those lies and then you speak it forth, you start to create realities around you. And so one of the things that your guardian angels will do if they see things entering your mind, they will speak to you and encourage you. No, that's not right. No, this is what God's word says. This is what God says you are. This is who God says you are. Because they know that if you start speaking things, then that means warfare, you know, level one ends up going to warfare level two. Then the demons start coming around because you created a space for them. You created a, a nesting ground for them. See, when we start to use our mouth to create realities in the demonic kingdom, I'm depressed, I'm lonely, I'm this, I'll never... We're creating a nesting ground for demons to come in to fill it. And they, they come in to take a, a, a root there. And so your guardian angels then will move into phase two, which is now to protect your space because you invited in demons by your words. But they always try to um, eliminate that process by speaking to you, saying, hey, this is what God's word says. So that way they won't have to go into that level two of warfare. They can just get you your words right. Create reality wow. of goodness and peace and righteousness. Those kind of things. Now, have you ever had to test a spirit? You know, it says that, you know, beware that, yeah. you know, uh, Lucifer, you know, portrays himself yeah. as an angel of light. Have you ever had, yeah. you know, a, a, a non-benevolent entity mm -hmm. approach you and pretend to be your friend or one of the good guys that you had to discern? And if you yeah. if you have, could you uh, elaborate on that and tell us a little bit about that? Oh yes, I have. And and again, when I tell you these it, the, about this, this isn't to put fear into anyone, but just to everyone to understand. You have things in place; you don't need to be afraid. This is why I say it's important for you to meditate on God's word, because any spiritual being that comes to you will enhance the Bible will enhance the Bible and they will speak God's word in some kind of a way. So it's important to meditate on God's word. But I've had, yes, uh, spiritual beings come that do not serve the Lord. And uh, they would try to tell me things, try to get me to go to places or get me to release things into the earth that uh, are not from God. And um, it's important to ask questions. It's important to ask questions. Who are you? If you need to, who are you? Who do you serve? What do you, who, who do you, you know, um, do you serve the Lord Jesus? All those kind of things. Those are great things to ask. But I tell people this, and this is what people kind of get a little upset at me on. 
And it's because they get upset at me on because it's rooted in fear and it puts it ball into their court. The way you truly test a spirit is knowing who God is. Because any spiritual being that God sends to you will carry his presence and his light. Demons, Satan, any spiritual being that is evil cannot bring or release light. So if you are regularly spending time with God in his word and in his presence, that's the light of God, any spiritual being that comes to you that ain't him, that ain't from him, you'll say, uh, you'll call it immediately. Nope. And I've had that happen where spiritual beings, because, you know, demons and other spiritual beings, they get nosy. You know, they're like, they're like mice. They're like rats, raccoons. You know, they just, they just get nosy. What you doing? They had flown into my house one time and I recognized it. Yeah, get out of here. No, I knew it because I know what light looks like. I know what true glory and light and presence looks like. I know the very smell of my king. I know the very, the, the, the very feeling of my king because I spend time with him there. That any spiritual being that comes in, you'll recognize like that. So the question is, when people want to test the spirits, I like to ask them, do you know Jesus? Do you know his word? Because that will eliminate any fear of something false coming to you. Because you know exactly what to do. Ain't nobody think twice when a fly comes into your house. Right? Nobody thinks mm -hmm. twice about a fly coming in. You remove it or swat it or tell it to go away. That's how you treat spiritual beings that aren't from the Lord. Get out of here. No, this is my space. This is my space. You can't be in here. You stink because they do. That's a beautiful <laughs> thought. I mean, even the smell. Yes. You know, you, you know the smell of mm -hmm. your king. That, that's yes. just a beautiful Jesus. thought, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's intimacy with God. Are we intimate with God? Are we intimate with his presence? Are we intimate with his word? Do we know his word? Do we know his presence? Because when things come to us that don't serve him, we'll recognize it like that. You know, you'll recognize, oh, that's not him. Oh, uh, no, that don't. And then you don't freak. I've had, I've had Satan appear to me before. Satan mm. appeared to me. He did not look like a pitchfork, horned creature, whatever. He actually looked very handsome. Black hair, smooth black hair, and had gems all in him. You know, in his, in his robe and everything. And he was real crafty with his hands. And he started talking to me. And so what I did was, I, he, was he, he appeared and he started talking to me. I went downstairs I went downstairs and I made myself some tea and he was he was just talking to himself. I didn't have time for that. And when I went back upstairs and he was still there, I said, Ugh. I said, You need to go. I don't have time for you. You have to go. You have to go. And so he just turned around and he left. That's you know that's that's how it is. Nah, that's it. That's that's, that's awesome. it. You don't you have so much authority. You have so much and I remember Eden was sitting in the corner. And he was uh, reading, and then I, and, and I looked at Eden, and I said, just to ask him, I said, the angel, I said, why didn't you do anything? He said, he said I didn't need to do anything. He said, you, you handle it just fine. Just you got this. To get. <laughs> yeah, told him to get, you know, to get. You know, and he, Satan was just trying to get me to <coughs> use my gift for power, and, and um, you know, if you, if you say things this way, you know, more people will like you. If you say things this way, more people will give to your ministry. You know, if you say it, and I was like, no, because this ministry ain't about me. This is about Jesus. I, that's a, one big red flag. <laughs> ain't about me, bro. I'm going to go down and get some tea. You just talk to yourself. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you talk to yourself. That's Spiritual just... warfare at its finest right there. I'm going to go get tea. <laughs> with lemon. <laughs> yeah, with lemon. Are you, are you with lemon. Chamomile kind of guy. <laughs> I like chamomile, actually. Chamomile is really good. Mm -hmm. I now, do. I got to say, I got to say, you know, this is definitely, you have a gift. Obviously, you have a gift, yeah. and it's it's something that, you know, we all have spiritual gifts. Yes. They're all different. We all yes. have different things that are given to us and mm -hmm. that God wants us to use, and you're using yours. But just like anything that God calls us to do, sometimes it can be difficult. Yeah. Right? Sometimes things are yeah. a struggle. I mean. Yes. Is this a burden to bear for you at times that you have this this gift? Yes. 
It is a burden. I'm glad you asked that because not everybody asks that. It, it is a burden. Um, it's not too heavy of a burden because Jesus said that his yoke is easy, his burden is light. That's true. But there is a heaviness to it. There is a reality to it. A lifestyle you have to live to can sustain it, to keep it. Um, but being in community, um, having friends around you uh, to really pray for you. Uh, my best friend, uh, Keith, and you guys might have seen him on my social media. He is such a good friend to me and um, really keeps me uplifted. He told me that the Lord told him, he said, you know, everybody wants to live in the spiritual world and see these things. And Mike, you just want a normal life. You just want to, you know, go to McDonald's. You just want to, you know. And so what he does is he and I, when we hang out, he just we just do fun, normal things together because it is a burden. You know, um, as much as I can turn things on or turn things off, you know, there's moments to where I'm so tired that the muscle just don't want to work. And I'm just uh, taking in so much stuff that um, it's difficult, you know, it is. It is difficult seeing spiritual beings and, and having these encounters. But the Lord sustains me regular times of sitting in his presence, not even praying, uh, just sitting on my on my on the floor on my back and saying, Holy Spirit, minister to me. You know, and he does. And then there's times where I would say a good I would say half fifty fifty. There's he's he is ministering to me himself. You know, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whatever, they're there, just minister to me and I'm not doing anything, just in his love. The other 50% are people. He's ministering to me through people. And I recognize his presence and his love through other people. And I, um, it took me a minute to recognize that, you know, because um, I thought it has to be you, it has to be you. And I remember him saying, Micah, that's me. Do you see that person that's looking at you that want, that's gave you a real big hug? Said, I love you, man, I'll pray for you. That's also me. Receive that. And when I started to receive that, oh, it was amazing. It's like the presence of God coming off that person. And to me, it's just it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you've done to the least of these, my brothers, you've also done for me. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's, that's right. That's exactly that's right. it. Yeah, that's right. And so I need people. Some people will ask and they'll say like, oh, I bet you, you know, you're, you are, you don't need anything else. You don't need anyone. You don't, whatever. And I say, no, I need community just as much as every other person. I need to be encouraged. I need to be told, good job. I need the thumbs up. I need the high fives, the pats on the back, you know. I need those simple things just like everybody else. 100%. Mm -hmm. but it all goes back to image bearing. That's something that, that's really fascinated me especially since I've been digging deeper, you know, into, into the word of God, you know, when he, yeah. he created you, you were made in his image, you're his image bearer, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, the world is, is supposed to see God through your actions, through your love, through your forgiveness, yeah. through, through all these things. And yeah. I compare it to a mirror, you know, it's not a mirror that's just pointing straight up to God so that when God looks down, he sees himself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it's kind of inverted. So that way, mm -hmm. when God looks down to you, yeah, you mm -hmm. see God, but you're pushing mm -hmm. that image of God out into the world and people are seeing mm -hmm. God when they look at you, if you're doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. That's right. You reflect him. You reflect his love. Absolutely. Absolutely. You. Uh, he told me, Jesus appeared to me one day and he said, oh, and I'll never forget it. He grabbed my, my hand and shook. Shaking Jesus' hand is awesome. But Jesus' hands are still calloused because he works with them. He's still a carpenter, so his hands are still rough, you know, around the edges. And um, But uh, uh, he grabbed my hand real strongly. And uh, in light what you said, Justin, he said, Micah, I said, yes, Jesus. He said, you are a representation of what love looks like to anyone who comes around you. You guys watching, all of you, you are a representation of what love looks like, you know, and that's what makes us so unlike any other spiritual creature, any other, any other creatures that we reflect what love looks like. We reflect what goodness looks like. We reflect what, what beauty looks like, you know, and Jesus told me, he said, you reflect that you are an image of what love looks like. Because when I made you, I put love in you. 
I put goodness in you. I put strength in you. I put, you just start naming things. And I just felt like, oh, that's so awesome. You know, <laughs> it was cool. It was cool to hear that from him. Well, that's the person you want to hear it from right there. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's right. Now, that's I right. guess kind of going along the, the same lines, you know, it, with the prophetic side of things, you know, what do you think the world needs to hear right now? What is everybody mm-hmm. out there? I mean, you're giving messages and, and we're, you know, all of us, you know, we read God's word. We're all, God speaks to all of us. I, yeah. I mean, we all, and we all get spoken yeah. to a little bit differently. Sometimes yeah. you hear something audibly. Sometimes yeah. you are like, for me, a lot of times it's, I'm reading the Bible and it's mm-hmm. like the Bible jumped up and smacked me in the face. That's just, yeah. I can tell when mm-hmm. God's mm-hmm. talking to me, I feel mm-hmm. it. I know. Yeah. yeah. And I, you talk a lot about intimacy with God and, and how yeah. he wants to be and we are supposed to fear God, but I think people take that in such a fear is not fear as in, you know, being scared of something. Right. Fear is just acknowledging his power, his greatness, yes. you know, knowing yes. who he is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what does the world need to hear right now? And, and, and how should they kind of approach the world that we're in today? Yeah. You know, the biggest thing, even I, I've seen Jesus weep and the father weep over this, this same thing. And the biggest thing that I would, I would say is that God wants to connect. He just wants to connect with you. He wants to, he wants to be there for you. He wants to be in your life. He wants you in his life. And knowing that there's a, there's a, this supernatural massive creator that's on the throne that lightning and power comes out of him and he says heaven is my throne earth is my throne. all of these massive things looks down at you and he says i just want to connect with you i just want to be in your life and you in my life you know and i i know that that's that's what what i keep sharing to the world is that god is ready he's he's ready and he wants you to want this you know, see, I remember Jesus said to me, he said, Micah, I want this. He said, I want friendship with him. He says, but I'm not going to control anyone. I'm not going to control anyone to come to me. I'm not going to control anyone to talk to me. I'm not going to control anyone to connect with me. He said, it's up to them to want this. He says, my, the door is open. My arms are open. He says, I am ready to connect, but it's just up to the person now. And I said, Jesus, what do you want me to do about it? He said, just keep reminding them again and again and again. God is ready to connect with you. He's ready to be your friend. When Jesus appeared to me and he was crying and, and, and he said, Mikey, bring me friends. I couldn't say I couldn't say no to that because his heart was so vulnerable that that would be the message to the people is I'm ready to be your friend now. I'm ready to be your friend. And I believe that is what the world needs to hear. We're so into trying to discern what is right and wrong, who's false, who's good, who's who's leading this, who's leading that, who's over this, who's over that, that we miss the simplicity that Jesus is just ready to be your friend. <laughs> He's ready to connect. He's ready to have that intimate time with you. He's ready to be involved in the things you do and wants you to be involved with things that he does you know yeah that's awesome and uh, i wanted to ask you this micah because uh i have a really you know supernatural you know worldview with, with with the bible and yeah when you look into you know deuteronomy 32 you know it talks mm-hmm. about you know it was basically a retelling of the tower of Babel, and it said that you know not only was mankind split it says that mm-hmm. uh the tongues were split, but it says that the, the peoples were divided amongst the sons of God. You yep. know, you get in Psalms, yep. you know, 82, it talks about, you know, they ruled unjustly and they will die yep. like any prince. So you see mm-hmm. that spiritual warfare going on uh, mm-hmm. with your experiences and what you have seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, are these, you know, entities slash fallen angels that are ruling unjustly that that the bible talks about are they still Mm -hmm. ruling today 
but I know everything's yeah. been put under, you know, the authority of Jesus, but like basically mm -hmm. like vice regents. Are we still mm -hmm. seeing that today or is, is those things come to an end at the cross? <clears throat> hmm. We are still, very good question. We are still dealing with them because Paul says we battle against principalities and rulers of the air. So we still have to deal with them. Good news is that you're right. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he took everything was brought under his feet. You know, he took authority over the heavens. Um, so when we deal with the principalities and powers of the air, we go in the name of Jesus. And I like to stress in the name of Jesus because a lot of, a lot of these supernatural folks will try and do it themselves. And the spiritual beings up there don't recognize that. They recognize the name of Jesus. They recognize the authority of Jesus. But yes, they, um, they are still active. They are still trying to influence um, they are still trying to battle. I was just talking to a minister the, uh, a few weeks ago. He was in New Zealand, and he was asking me, what are the spiritual beings, uh, the the, uh, the gods, the Elohim, that are over New Zealand? I said, I feel like there's two. And so I began to tell him, you know, um, you know the two that were there. And and um, we talked about their decision. They, they have free will to serve God or not. But, yeah, they are they're around, and they like to influence and that is part of the spiritual warfare we have to deal with, yeah. Well, just to follow up uh, with that, with mm -hmm. over America, mm -hmm. uh, which Elohim do you think that is residing over America? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we have one that is crossing, well, we have one that is in the sea that is actually trying to influence us, uh, especially in the areas of, uh, well, I don't know if I can go into detail with that one right now, only because I don't know where this is going to show. So I don't want you guys to get flagged, but um, but we do have one. Um, the the uh, we do have also an angel over America, um, the U.S. that uh, looks like a Native American, and he's massive and uh, has a fiery bird resting on his uh, left arm. And he carries a staff and he, he, he walks from east to west continually over America. And he prays and he, and he battles over the U.S., keeps a lot of these things out from the U.S. So not only are there you know, bad ones, but there are good ones that are over countries as well. That Like Michael is the angelic prince over Israel. Okay, he protects Israel. He doesn't go after the U.S., he protects Israel. Um, so there's another angel over the U.S. that helps with that. But there are bad ones, too, that we do have to go through, that we have to fight through as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, Micah, this is something that we don't normally do. Um, mm -hmm. We normally start off with prayer, but you talked a little bit about it at the beginning. Yeah. And I'd love if you'd pray over us, pray with us. Um, that we yeah. have that intimacy with Jesus, that we have that um, that closeness, that relationship. Sure. If you could do that for us, I would love that. Oh, my goodness, yes. I'm so glad you asked. Yes, 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 yes. So um, however the posture you want to be in to receive from the Lord, you can just do that. But, Lord, I just thank you so much. Lord, I thank you for those that are watching. Lord, and I thank you, Lord that you desire intimacy with us. Lord, we set down our religious thinking. God, we crush it. We take a hammer and we crush it. We put to death our religious thinking. We put to death those thoughts that, um, that you don't want to do this, that you don't like us, God. We put to death those thoughts, God, and we embrace the presence. And I just release the presence of God. I release the presence of the Holy Spirit. I release the fire of God upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you are brilliant, and you love to show us Jesus. You love to talk to us about Jesus. You love to remind us of the things Jesus said. So, Holy Spirit, we rest in your embrace. We rest in your presence, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are ready to move upon our hearts to receive the fullness of Jesus. Jesus, you prayed. Father, I desire that they would be with me where I am, that they would see the fullness of my glory. And Lord, I thank you. Jesus, you prayed it. You prayed that prayer. And we're here to say yes 
Show us the fullness of your glory. Show us the fullness of your glory. Show us the fullness of your glory. We want to behold God. We want to behold the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We open up our hearts to receive from you. And Lord, I just thank you for fun, angelic encounters, Lord. Angels and dreams, angels and visions, God. I thank you, Lord, for enhancing their spiritual senses, God, to the degree that you've called them to be on this side right now. I thank you for enhancing their spiritual senses and their spiritual gifts. In Jesus' name, we love you, Jesus, and we want more of you. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is powerful. Well, thank you, Michael. I absolutely love that. <laughs> You're welcome. So, You're welcome. <laughs> now, I don't know, if Justin, you got another, you got anything else or, or something right now? I was... Oh, no. I mean, and that was just, it kind of hit me, man. I know we're always talking about Deuteronomy 32 and, and the spiritual yeah, side of things. And I'm like, man, there's, yeah. there's nobody else to ask that question to. It just kind of hit me from out of nowhere. I didn't mean to blindside you, Micah. <laughs> No, not blindside at all. I'm used to it. I, yeah, I'm, yeah. You're right. There are they are around and they're real. And I've seen some of them, met some of them, and uh, you know the gods. India has thousands of gods, mm -hmm. and uh, the gods. That's the station. That's actually where they stay right now. Is above India. That's why I keep praying for India because one day you'll see those gods fall out of the sky, bro. You know when they die like mortal men. I oh, mean, I'm praying for India. I know thousands are going to come to know the Lord Jesus, man. Can you imagine those temples, those deities crawling, falling to the floor? India, your time is coming, you know. Amen. So it's going to, yeah, they're around. But Jesus has defeated them, and we do have to deal with them. Um, but that's just what it is for now. Ben, you got anything else? I'm good. Well, listen, Micah, I want you to tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find your information, where they can follow you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I am on my website, beholdwonder.com. Um, you can find uh, my articles there. I also released a book called The Invitation. Um, you can purchase the book on Amazon, and I have a children's series out called The City of Kings. Um, you can, that's a great family oriented story about me in heaven with playing with a bunch of kids and and it's 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 amazing and so you can find my stuff there i'm also on facebook micah turnbo on facebook you can find me there i'm on instagram behold wonder i'm behold wonder at behold wonder on instagram but on facebook it's just micah turnbo i also have a youtube channel um behold wonder you can search that and i have videos there um where i tell stories and and things like that so yeah i'm i'm um all over the place on social social media. So you can definitely find me there. But yeah, definitely pick up the book. Um, I go through my childhood. Uh, some crazy encounters I've had. It's just a really good overview book about my life and and uh, where I am now. So, yeah. Well, Micah, thank you so much. It's been awesome. We've really enjoyed you on. And I got a feeling uh, we'll be... We'll be uh, Calling you back here because as soon as we hang up, we'll have about a thousand more questions. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I would love to come back anytime, guys. Anytime. You guys are fun. I actually really enjoy you. This yeah. is fun. Well, I'm glad. I know you're. I know you're not going to lie. So I appreciate that. <laughs> I really enjoy. It. I've done a lot of podcasts. You guys are fun. So <laughs> you guys are real fun. I enjoy. You. I enjoy good this. Deal. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Dig Bible Podcast. If you would check us out on facebook instagram twitter youtube comment tell us where you're from because that would be cool comment subscribe like hit the thumbs up share with your friends share the share the love till next time see you later